Okay, I'll start again. <laughs> so we're going to carry on with the gestural drawing, and we're going to turn it into. We're going to move on into using paint, um, and as I say, we don't want to focus in on individual body parts. We want to see the figure as a whole. So um, if we look at this example here, very very simple painting, but really effective. Um, and you can see the, the most detail is around where the hand is, but the, the sort of the head, the face, there's no detail at all, is there? But we can read it really well as a figure. One thing that's really important in this is, is the value structure, the values in there, the, the lights and the shadows. If you look at, for example, this patch of light on the girl's leg, it's a shape, isn't it? We just see one shape. Um, the hand, look at that shape on the hand. We don't need any more information than that to actually read that as a hand. Um, just a patch on the shoulder. There's no detail, but it helps us to see the figure. And th th without those, it would lose so much. You know, So it's really important when we're doing this today to focus in on those shapes. Um, so we're gonna combine what we did last week with that gestural drawing and then we're also going to look at sh shapes of light and dark. If you remember when I showed you the bark drawing of the, the, the guy's torso, and it was just divided up into shapes, wasn't it? But it was really effective. So it's that kind of thing, but with colour. Um, I'll show you another example. Again, I mean, a fabulous painting, really powerful image, um, but there's no detail in it at all. But just from these shapes we were able to read so much about uh, the way those people are moving, um, the way they're standing, where their balance is, and it's so simple, isn't it? You know, you can almost, you can almost hear this woman saying, ouch, that's really cool, you know? You can just, you just get that impression, don't you? Just by the way she's raising her shoulder, um, turning her head, um, and it's all done through light and dark, uh, and, and having that, um, you know, that line of action that we talked about last week in the, um, the images you could clearly see the dynamics in the, this movement okay so we've got to try and retain that when we move into painting because one of the problems we sometimes have, have is it's great being quite expressive when you're drawing but the minute you start painting you will, we start to get careful um, but we want to try and c continue that energy okay so we're going to have a go now at um, more gestural drawing if you go back to um, last week's PowerPoint that I shared with you, people were struggling to find the link for the website. It's actually there, that where it says gestural drawing. Okay, um, so if you click on that, it should open that web page. Okay, um, and then we're going to have a go in a moment. Before we do that, I'm just going to quickly demonstrate um, the the picture that I'm going to do today. Did everybody bring along a reference image, by the way? I know some people have mentioned they haven't. Yeah, most people have got something. If you haven't got a reference image, um, I've got one um, here. And this will be shared on the screen later. So I'm going to have a go at drawing this girl sat in a chair. Okay, let me get this in here. In fact, if I fold that over, you'll be able to see it. So the first thing I'm going to think about <coughs> is that line of action, isn't it? If you remember, we, and that's from from the, looking at this, we we just want one line that kind of suggests the overall movement of the body. Which for me, it would be something like that, that curve there. Um, so we're looking at something that goes like this. Okay, now. I've put charcoal on everybody's um, table, but there's also pencils as well. Um, because when we come to draw on the board, um, I've drawn mine out with pencil. Um, traditionally, when you paint an oil, people would have used charcoal. But the problem with using charcoal is it does mix in with the paint a little bit, you know, and it can muddy the paint up. So you can use either, it's entirely down to you. So we've got that movement there. And I want to try and retain that when I um, end up doing my final drawing. Um, and then if you remember, what we did was we, we thought about those three sort of circles that we have. We've got the head, um, we've got the upper torso, which is slightly larger, and that's kind of coming down this angle, isn't it, down here? Um, the pelvis, 
sort of like this. And then the legs, if you remember, were done as just like, almost like curved lines, weren't they? So essentially, I mean, that shoulder's quite high. That shoulder's there. And that shoulder's slightly lower. So essentially, I've got the, the drawing sketched out there very, very roughly. Okay. Um, Can I ask a quick question? Yeah. <clears throat> what I find with doing gestural drawings and, and doing things like that, you, you wouldn't necessarily get everything exactly right, whereas on the bar, when I was sort of drawing, they would mark out the gauge, yeah. mark out and put a general shape and check on everything against everything yeah. to get it exactly in the right place. So there's a big difference between doing a quick gesture and hoping it's in the right place and doing it right yeah. The gestural drawing comes in, um, we were talking about the life drawing classes, some people have been going to life drawing classes, and the way a life drawing class works is you'll have maybe a, a one minute pose at the start, and then a 15 minute pose, and then an hour long pose. Um, so you can't approach the one minute pose in the, in the manner that you would a bog drawing, because you'd, you'd literally have one or two marks on the paper, and you'd be out of time. And that's where gestural drawing comes in. Um, it's to kind of get the overall feel and, and the overall movement of the figure. There's no accuracy in there at all. Yeah. No, not with the gestural drawing. I mean, if you wanted to do this this image and you wanted to be super accurate, you would spend a long time measuring things out and getting things in the right place. But if we go back, think back to the paintings that I've just shown you, they were very simple, weren't they? They were almost like gestural paintings. Yeah. Yeah, so that's what we're doing today. Sorry. It was still right. No, that's the, well, we don't know. We don't know what the reference was like. Yeah. And I think today, I mean, we, I want to focus on retaining these gestures that we were doing last week, but then thinking about the colour and the light and the shadow and the values, okay, which we didn't do too much of last week. It was more about the drawing, okay. Um, and as I say, if you wanted to do something photorealistic, you could spend a long time getting the proportions accurate and that's where the bog type thing comes in um, okay the reason I shared the bog drawings last week was just to show you that this is the way traditionally people were taught how to draw the figure um, personally it's not something that you know I would enjoy so doing yeah so once you've got that in place, I mean, the other thing I was talking about last week were things like angles of the shoulders and angles, angles of the pelvis. So the shoulder's kind of tilted like that a little bit, and the pelvis is almost horizontal there, okay? And the other thing I wanted to talk about while I'm doing this is if we were to take... Uh, I want to think about the position of this girl on the page. And if I take the overall width, which is approximately... From her foot to her elbows about there it's almost a square you can see the height and the width are almost the same aren't they so i'm just thinking you know and then this is similar to what you would do in the bog you actually get the overall proportion so i'm looking at something that's going to be maybe like this i'm doing it very approximate okay so now i've got some kind of point of reference when i want to tidy this drawing up i can see that her knee is approximately halfway up so Although I've got this loose line in here, a knee would actually be somewhere around there, wouldn't it? Yeah. And that comes down at an angle down to this corner, down here somewhere. Um, and then the other thing you want to start thinking about when you're doing your drawing, which I mentioned again last week, was relating one part of the body to another. I don't know if you remember me saying that. So if I want to get this bit of her, where a jumper meets her trousers there, that sort of little bit of a turn in the the color there is directly underneath her head isn't it there you see that so i've got a head there if i take a straight line down that bit of her leg is kind of roughly here yeah and her legs on a on an angle like that okay now i've got that in position and i've got this in sort of position i can start to relate other things this let's look at the angles We've got an angle that her, um, her arm runs down from her shoulder, which is, I've got it too shallow there. It's too steep, rather. It's something like that. Ignore the book at the moment. This, this elbow comes out to somewhere approximately here. Um, we've got another big angle there, haven't we? You see that? So 
I think a head slightly too tall there, but there's an angle that goes approximately like that down there. Um, and then that just bit of a shoulder just cuts in a little bit. Okay. Um, let's think, where does this elbow come in line with the knee? So I'm lining things up now. You can see there's almost a horizontal line across there. Yep. So that elbow's around about here. I'm just putting these marks in very roughly to give me a guide. Now the weight is acting straight down through the center of her head and the weight's sort of round there, isn't it? So that's, that's that bit of a curve in a jumper and the bottom is around about here. All very approximate at the moment. Um, and then obviously this leg's important and that's directly beneath that bit of a hand which we've already sort of marked, suggested here. So um, that curve is approximately, and I'm guesstimating, something like that. And then we have the angle of a leg coming down. Okay. I'm not going to spend too long on feet and things like that because that you can, you you can spend a long time doing hands and feet, doing details, and really it just makes it look a little bit awkward. You almost just need a shape for the foot, okay, um, and the shape for the other one. So very quickly, I've got I've got those rough shape of the figure, haven't I? And it's got the dynamics as well of of the entire movement, okay. And I don't know how long that took. Maybe well, we're on 11 minutes on the video, so probably five minutes, okay. So I'm going to give you five minutes to have a go at doing, doing a figure. We'll go back to that website. Um. Have you got um, a sketchbook or a piece of paper or something? Yeah. Um. Before we start, I will just recap on what I want you to be thinking of while we do this. Yeah, it's okay, I know, it's everybody getting ready. I flick back to the camera, actually. Okay. I'll actually give you 10 minutes, it'll be bit more generous <laughs> so what I want you to think about think about what I just did at that process the very first thing I did can you remember what was what was the very first thing I did the, the curve the line of action okay and then roughly positioned those three circles the head the upper thorax and the pelvis just uh, no I'm going to put one on the screen with the website um, no, 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 just, well, I'm going to put one on the screen in a minute. I don't know what it's going to be like. We might flick through a few to choose, to choose a decent one. <laughs> we all sorted with paper? thinking I'm wondering whether you would want to do this one given that I've just drawn it but then that's the thing isn't it <laughs> yeah it is a nice pose oh, you know. not at the moment we're going to do a bit of practice um, and then we're doing our own yeah so what I want to do is we're just going to do a bit of practice to start with before you do your own image, okay? Um, so I'm going to put an image on the screen. And the only reason we're doing this is because we've had a week off. <laughs> and I know everybody probably would be forget, forgetting everything we did last week. It was really important last week that we focused on the figure as a whole, as I say, and I'm really over overstressing that point, not a collection of body parts. And you, you do that with by going through that process of starting with that line of action, 
um, and, uh, and a very rough line. One curve, remember, it's not an S curve, it's just one curve or one line to show you where the, the dynamics of the figure are acting. Then think about those three major um, circles, that the head, the upper thorax and the pelvis, where they would be in relation to each other, and, and sort of the angles of those. And then the limbs, approximately. Then what I want you to do is think about relating one part of the body, as I did with the head and this, with a different part, okay? You could see the, the line of the knee lined up with her elbow and things like that. So when you're looking at the image, be looking for those relationships and those connections, okay? And then avoid all detail. That's all we're doing. We're not, we've got 10 minutes, so you're not going to have time for detail. If you do have time, once you've got to this point, the next thing I would be thinking about, for example, is thinking about where the shadow shapes are. So, so here on her leg, we've clearly got a shadow that does this. It comes round here and then goes across. So I might very quickly begin to mark in some shadow shapes, okay? And that leg comes down here and we've got another shadow shape here. Doing it super quick, okay? And this leg is also in shadow. Let's see what else. There's a shadow underneath here. It's like a triangle that kind of comes down. So I'll very quickly mark that in. Um, this shoulder is in shadow. We've obviously got the book. This is only if you have time. Once you've got the proportions and, and the, the figure in the right place, then you might start thinking about doing this sort of thing. There's a shadow down the side of the head. Okay, can you see I'm starting to block in the lights and the darks? Because that's going to form the basis for our painting. Just like those paintings that I showed you earlier, it was these shapes that gave it form, wasn't it? Okay, so you start off with the line of action, the main, sort of those three main circles, get the angles of the limbs and then start to relate one part of the body to another and then if you have time think about where the shadow shapes are okay right here we go so we've got all genders adults all the same length class right 10 minutes now I'll flick through until we find a nice image Okay, I'll make him a bit bigger. They are actually, yeah. Uh... No, we don't. <laughs> Conan the Barbarian. Oh, I can't see that one. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. There's lots of light and shadow. Go on, it's interesting pose that is. Have a go at that one. Yes. Don't worry about accuracy. Yeah. Don't worry about accuracy. We're not, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm going to stop the recording. There's no point reading.